Carney here, of course, with Marnie Kenris, and we have back our favorite guest. Hey now, Greg Fitzsimmons. Mm-hmm. That's nice he to is hear. One of our favorite. Yeah, I like I went from us. favorite to one of our favorites. <laughs> yeah, like well, in, in that's her second. opinion. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling no, you, I'm not, true no, there. I'm not going to let you start up here. I want you to, I want you to work yeah. your way it's up work there. Who it. are the other big ones? Who are the ones you really like and look forward to? <laughs> Nobody. You know, so what, I, I can't think of anybody. So yeah, you won. You are the favorite. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love it. But it's been a while. I think you were on maybe like two years ago or something. It's been yeah, a couple years. The last one was our live show. So that's why I, thought. Oh, I that's had right. very short yeah, yeah. improv. That was fun. That, that was, was fun. fun. Yeah. Playing to 10 people was amazing. Yeah. yeah it was audience. fun, though. People love us. The, the podcast listeners have no idea how many yeah. people are out there. That's true. We don't but even we know. But we pointed how many out. Are out there. Yeah. We're like, there's nobody here. That's <laughs> Our the show is unsuccessful. We'll call out the thing that they don't need to know about. Yeah. Like, right. Right. Like right now, I'll say at that show, I had super short chin length hair. No one cares about that. However, Did you? yes, that's what sticks in my mind, and I want to cut it that short now oh, really? that I got this non what I wanted hair color. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But <laughs> You definitely look like a hippie now. I know, and I don't want to look like a hippie. That's no, Oh, really? No. I actually have done like Snapchats about that, how I fear looking like a hippie, and I'm anything but a hippie. Yeah. And I just keep looking more like a hippie. Yeah. So I put on like I put on like this necklace today to not look like a hippie. I'm like, is this a non hippie necklace? Well, or I don't hippie? know if it accomplished what you were trying to do. No. Yeah. So anyway, so I do that's why I kinda want to. But you're a hot short. hippie, so it's fine. But I'm not. I think You are. I, I had look- you and Kelsey at my house the other night and I was like, Oh, these are very pretty girls. Like you both had like long Yeah, but she's hair. blonde and clearly like a beach girl. Yeah. I look like I might smell and have granola for breakfast <laughs> and lunch and dinner. Well, that's yeah. A I picture segue. you having like long toenails and armpit yeah, hair. Yeah, and that's not me. Honestly, like now I really need to cut my hair. That you pointed that out because I've genuinely talked about it on social media. How are the toenails? Very short, very yeah. well done. My nails aren't painted right now, so I'm painting them tomorrow. Right, because I'm okay. going out of town. On you painting them yourself? No, well, I'm getting them done. Yeah, only hippies paint them. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Do you guys want a water? By the way, no, Do you like a water? I have Thank water. You. Okay, no, we're good. Do you want water? Um, no, I'm all right. You have a water. Yeah. We're, we're at Greg's yeah. studio right now. I, I wanted to talk to you guys Fitz today. Fitz Studios. I know. What cool. do you think, huh? I think it's awesome. I just got a lazy boy. Yeah. Got it for myself uh, for Christmas. For the lazy girl that's sitting in it. it is the gr- and you're burning a candle. I think that's very nice. Well, my wife won't let me have a lazy boy in the house. And I was like, I don't give a shit. This doesn't fit in the office. This is your Fraser chair. This is my Fraser chair. Why? Yeah. Do men like these things? Why would you not like an overstuffed, <laughs> fluffy, form-fitting chair that goes horizontal so you can nap any time? That's yeah, a that great question. True. Are but you kidding me? Why do they always me? have to look like that? Because that's part of the charm. It should be. I purposely got the ugliest color. <laughs> it's like the ugliest beige. color. Yeah, I think it's helping me look like a hippie. Because yeah. it's such it a, like a washout yeah. color. Yeah. For sure. If right. I was sitting against like a modern chair right now, you would not think I was a hippie. Why women? Why do women hate the lazy boy so much? It's so it's physically not unbecoming. Pretty. Yeah. They're very comfortable. This, I like sitting in them. This is the equivalent of a dude on the street that is like, ooh. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't want him to approach you. He's yeah. kind of dumpy. Yeah. He doesn't like have a shit food to all over his shirt. Of chairs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's not attractive. But I, mm. I like them. I definitely like sitting in them. Oh, very mm. comfortable. Just, yeah, I'm sure you are. You guys could both fit in it. We could. We could. Yeah. Fit yeah. It. Okay. Well, I wanted to talk to you guys today about testing. So there's this term called shit testing. Have you ever heard of that before? No. So it's like a p- pickup artist term, but it's like right. they talk about how women shit test men. So mm. constantly they test putting their fecal tests. matter. That's yeah, weird. that's exactly what they do. Um, but how how women are constantly testing men? Do you believe that women test men? Well, it's subtle for some, isn't it? There's sort of a spectrum. I mean, I guess for some women, there's like the... In the TV and movies, there's always a test like... There's two types of guys. There's the guys that buy you flowers after sex. And first, and I, first of all, there's, there's, to me, that always feels so written. And like, I don't think most women are like that. I think, I'd like to cliche. think there's just no, a agree. gut. There's a gut. Yeah. You know, and you either... Like you talk about that guy on the street. You know, there's just something about him. You don't, you can't put your finger on it, but you just feel like, is that what a shit test is? Like, no. Know. So a shit test is like, for example, a girl will say, um, you know, uh, come help me put a table together that I got from right. Ikea. And a lot of guys think that this woman oh, is, is like purposely testing saying. a guy. So whatever right. he does, 
he's like walking on eggshells the oh, entire like do you believe that women are that malicious and calculated that that they're, they're, every situation is some sort of test yeah it seems so <laughs> i would <laughs> say like, that's yeah, true sounds accurate yeah because um you know and i i don't know that they're conscious of doing it at the time until the answer happens and then even ah. they realize it was a shit test yeah you See, don't do it that, intentionally you don't go into the most it important like, part that you don't go into it going i am going to test this man but you're subconsciously testing him yeah and i don't think it's I think that there's the preliminary test to see whether or not you would date the guy. Then there's the test of we're dating and we're trying to see if we'll take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. I'm married 18 years. I still get shit tested. Of course you do. Even more so. Well, she'll say like last night, she'll be like, all right, I'm cooking in the kitchen. You've been out all day. Can you get off your phone? (laughs) And I really had some like business I needed to deal with. Yeah. But I put it down. I went in the kitchen. I sautéed the onions. I got involved with cooking dinner with her. Okay. And she ended up really opening up about her dad who has dementia. Hmm. Was st- she talked about stuff she'd never talked about with me before. And I realized it's a shit test, but it's also, I think, um, a really healthy way of saying, are you there for me? Yeah. You know? I, think it's, I like that. I think and you're rewarded be. for that test <laughs> yeah. if you pass it. 100%. I, yeah. Do you think it's maybe an unhealthy way to say, are you there for me? Because couldn't you just in the healthy way say, are you here for me? Or is that too explicit? No, no. That's the thing I think that you realize, I'm sure you realize with raising kids, yeah. is that it's not all so linear. You know, that there's, there's shit tests with kids, isn't there? You know, whether or not you're going to grant them more boundaries based on how responsible they are. And yeah. Your kids are a little young for that. But as they get older, you start getting into that. I think it's with any relationship. You sort of like... Um, you are rewarded for supporting the person in Definitely. some way. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's malicious, and I don't think that, um, I think it's a dance. I don't think you ask directly. Yeah, you no, know, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, well, that's the difficulty for a lot of guys because I, I don't like when guys write to me saying like, "Is she testing me right now by doing this?" Yeah, she hasn't called me back. Is she testing me? And right. that it makes my 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 body cringe hearing the word test because it sounds like it's so calculated and malicious yeah. and I love the way that you just f- explained what's actually going on. So what happens to guys, for example, let's say you didn't get off the phone and yeah. you didn't go chop onions for her and have this wonderful conversation that brought you guys closer together. What what could have or would have happened? Wait, I'm sorry, but good thing the onions were there. You could have maybe a- I know. cried a little uh, bit over the story yeah. but the, thanks to the onions. That was a perfect right. setup for her. Yeah, yeah, I could have been weeping profusely. yeah. yeah. <laughs> She'd be like, I love you so much. Yeah. Um, I think that you, I hate the word doghouse, but I think that you violated a trust. They were, it's like the trust test where you fall backwards and mm-hmm. will you catch me? And I think you have to then, I know there's a math in my head where I always know how close we are and how, how tight the intimacy is. And based on that, I know the work I have to do to build mm-hmm. the trust back. Wait, you tell, know, me, like, tell me more about this. So well, like last week, last weekend I was on the road for um, fr- for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I got back on a Sunday, and then on Sundays I played beach volleyball with a bunch of comedians. I was just uh, I I'm so I've been here for ten years and I've been wanting to join a oh, beach volleyball. Come play with us. I want to play. With us. play. Are and you I'm any really good? Not that bad. Yeah, I'm actually. Then, oh, then we would love to have yeah, you. Yeah. No, there's there's women. There's my, my daughter plays. She's 14. Oh, perfect. But she's We're good. She played level, in school. Okay, All right. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, and so I went, but then I, um, I ate a pot gummy bear in the morning, which pretty much everybody does because we play for like three hours. Yeah. And and it's legal now. And it's legal now. But then it ended and I went back to my friend's house and I wasn't really thinking like I, I should have gone home and I'm at his house hanging out with him for like an hour. And then she calls me like, where are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm at Zach's house. She's like, of course his name's Zach. Like you're at some 14 year old's house. Right, right, (laughs) right. And so she's like, come, come home. So I came home and it was like, she was, you know, she was upset because she'd spent the whole weekend with the kids and she needed a break. Yeah. And, uh, and so the next night I was supposed to, I play hockey on Monday nights in a league. And so I canceled it, which I never do. But I just felt it from her. Good move. That it was not. And I didn't feel like. Winston Churchill would have made that move at war. Did she ask you to do that? Interesting. That's a good move. 
very Winston strategic. Churchill. Well, I saw that movie recently. The one oh, because was... I'm reading his biography right now. Oh, funny. It's like 1,200 pages. That sounds awful. It's awful. <laughs> but when I say yeah. read it, I listen to it. I listen to the audio book, and uh, I specifically listen because it helps me fall asleep. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you say? I don't know. What did I say? I think that— Oh, did, you, did, did she ask you? To not play hockey? Mm-hmm. No, but when I oh, told her I was better. going, she had a look on her face, and I immediately went, yeah, we're going to miss hockey this yeah. week. Yeah. We're okay. going to stay home and make What does that dinner. look look like? The face? Because I just want I want guys to understand, so even if they're not in a relationship, I want them to, to know what that deflated, possibly looks like. Deflated. deflated. And which really made me feel like it wasn't that she was mad at me and she wanted me to do penance. It was that she missed me, that yeah. she wanted to spend time with me. She wants to be the top priority. Right. And so I think there's a way of communicating between, like you say, you say, can you just ask directly for things? I don't think that people can. I think that there's – that's half of it. But I think the other half is you have to be attuned. Don't be a fucking child if you're a guy. Don't be a child who has to be told directly things. Yeah. You know, look look for the hints. Feel the hints. Women are all about I think subtleties. It's great that you can recognize them. We are all about subtleties, and we're surprised when men don't see them because we right. see them clear as day. Yeah. So, I mean, I would never be the one who would ask directly or or talk directly. I'm the polar opposite. Well, you're of that. Irish, so you shut down and don't communicate. Oh, absolutely. So that's a, well, that's I'm different. Jewish, and I should be an over communicator. And you're I t- not. I, I typically shut down as well. I I can try to do my best after I've had my initial female response right. where I do feel deflated and because I, I don't want to have to say can you please love me for a second can you please put me number one mm. can you please not do the things that I know that you really want to do and just think about me because mm-hmm. it feels needy and it feels selfish and I feel guilty afterwards if I say that and then he gives it to me mm-hmm. and it feels um, like it's not real yeah. it, it, if i ask for something and then he gives it to me then it's already Doesn't really count. it's like christmas right. gifts yeah. like not that you would relate as a jew just kidding but uh if i, I <laughs> no, i'm kidding but if i tell my mom what i want for christmas or if you tell your boyfriend what you want for christmas it's, it's like exciting. i wish they would have just known that and got yeah. it for me not that they would know that's that. so funny because so i ask i asked for that lazy boy and you I was got this very for, for Christmas. Oh my god! And I was amazing. very happy that I got it. But it's Who did like you ask? I wish that I asked my wife. Oh, I said I want a lazy boy. But As, she re- usually won't let you have a lazy boy, so that's even better because now she's gotten it. Well, for notice you. where the lazy boy is. Right, exactly. But as it's a like woman, as far away from my house as yeah. possible. As a woman, you're in your dream world. You're picturing someone knowing you so well that they would know that you want this lazy boy, and you wouldn't have to say a word. Yes. And so I know, like. In Seinfeld, it's like my fave when they say birthdays are relationship killers because it's like that gift moment. You're going to either like give them the absolute wrong thing, uh, which you probably will. Like Jerry gave Elaine cash when they were like, (laughs) she's like cash. You give me cash. (laughs) So it's like women in a way will test with ways like that. Like if a dude, if a dude you're seeing because at the at that episode they were like sleeping together or something. Uh, So as a woman, if you're if you're birthday rolls around this is a huge moment it's a huge test but you can't suck your expectations too high because it's not realistic but if a dude that you're seeing gives you something cold like cash you know so birthdays and holidays are tests the huge tests for women they are for men they're really not right because men don't i think it's like with sex in a man will say like look at his ease on sorry he fucking said, he pointed to his penis, <laughs> and he was like, how about a little something? Mm-hmm. You know, women don't do that. A woman w- instead will nuzzle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You we know? love the nuzzle. You, move, you the nuzzle, your body over. Yeah. The nuzzle means a lot. Yeah. You're like, move your hand left. Like, that's what you're trying to say right, for them to right. do. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, I don't, I wish we could speak up more, but would, would guys find that sexy? Well, I think tra- they like tra- it? It, traditionally, no. I mean, a lot of guys feel like uh, if a woman tells them what to do, then they're, it's an affront. Mm-hmm. You know, on a very, you know, repressed level. They may not know it, but subconsciously, yeah. men like to be the aggressor. Yeah. So I think it, it is tough because the woman is expected. Not anymore. I mean, I know post postmodern feminists like yourselves <laughs> will point to your vaginas and say, "Fucking, here's a napkin for your collar. Here's a here's a lobster bib. Enjoy. Go to town. Yeah. Um, but I think it is like um, traditionally <laughs> tough for women to try to get get messages across. Yeah, it is difficult, and that's why we well, resort. I, I don't like the word testing, but that is why we resort mm, to much more subtle cues. Yeah. Someone, for guys, someone that I'm seeing. Hello. Mm-hmm, hello. Uh, oh, look at you revealing information. Well, yeah. Uh, 
he will give me a massage and I'm very dictator like with the massage. Yeah. Like I will say like, no, no, no more. I need to the right lower to the, because it's That's like, good. but it's, it's in that massage zone that I am like that, but I'm not yeah. like that any other way, but it surprised him and made him laugh. And so I'm like Mussolini of massages. Yeah. But other than that, like I can't ask for, I would ask for nothing. You know, I would not specify, you know, anything sexual. It, I get too shy or what I would want yeah. in other ways. But with the massage, I will speak up. But every other right. time, no. So, you, right. okay, for the sexual stuff, because you're more uncomfortable with that? Is that why you would? Yeah. Really, like I, well, I'm you also, think it's insulting to him? Yeah, that too. It's I don't know, really, but it's weird how I gain confidence with the massage. Yeah. Like, yeah. I will tell you, but everything else I won't speak up on ever. That's interesting. Yeah. I, would, I would say, like, most women that I know are like that. I don't know anybody who is extremely outspoken when it comes to those things. Yeah. And if they are what outspoken... Things? Massage or sex? N- massage, sex, um, wanting their husband to stay home from mm. hockey. Uh, anybody who who I've seen do that, I automatically think, why are you such a bitch to your husband? Like mm. I, I, those are That's the way that my brain goes to. Yeah. Because I would never do that, although I would want to be able to do that. I really want my husband to be able to read my mind, which is horrible. It's yeah. horrible what we do to me. Yeah. Do you ever do yeah. that to your wife? What? Like, want her to read your mind or hint, throw low, you know, s- slow little... I'd like her to initiate little... sex more often, but that has nothing to do that's with me separate. sending signals. That's a constant SOS. Yeah. That's just yeah. out on the airwaves right. as a hum. <laughs> but you yeah. never do anything like, you know... Like subtly to get her to do something If you want her else. to get off her phone, would you be like, hmm? Or would you say, hey, get off your phone? You I'd know. text her to get off her phone. See, okay, it's so <laughs> different. And that's funny. I like that. I think that's a cute move. Well, can you remember when you were dating back in those stages? Like you were dating just recently. I am. What, what, Still were, were there How long things? has it been? Like a month. All right. Very new. Yeah. Do you want to re- reveal clear. anything else? Okay. Then They're clearly making tune love in to next one episode where she's going to tell you a little bit more about the guy that she's yeah. dating. But um, but when when you were dating, not even this guy that you're dating now, other people that you were dating, would you do certain things in the beginning stages to get them to do something else or something for you or to see who they were? Yeah. Like yeah. what? Um, well, the first thing that kind of popped in my mind was the uh, guy that I was super into, and he lived in Venice. And one night I went out with him and his friends, and he was talking with his friends a lot, and I kind of was at the bar alone, and I felt uncomfortable. So I was starting conversations with other people. Oh, men? So that, not whoever was there, but yeah, most likely a man, just because it was like kind of packed with dudes, um, to get his attention. Which is passive aggressive, but also yeah. I was shy and uncomfortable and his friends were there. But I was trying to be like, mm, look, I have to talk to other people. Hint, hint, hint. Mm. Um, I have to make out with other people. <laughs> yeah. Did he ever pick up on it? Um, yeah, he did. He and did. then he'd kind of like come over with like a cute smile on his face and be like, what's going on? Mm. Yeah. And then did, how did that make you feel? Did that make you feel Good. better? Yeah, yeah. Better. yeah, I wasn't like hurt. You know, I, I'm not like a dramatic. I'm not drama. But if he hadn't come over, what do you have? Then I'd be, yeah. You'd have been mad at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's a period of time because for me, when I was dating, it was important to me that a girl could make her own way in a bar or a party. That's, and I didn't have to feel that's like that's I could sure. babysitter. And I, would, I would be that girl for a while because I went to several like parties and bars and stuff with his friends before him and I were totally serious. Or we never became totally serious, but um, – I always was cool on my own. I'd show up alone. Like that night specifically, I came alone like two hours after they had gotten there. They were already really drunk and whatever. And so I was being the, the cool chick and just showed up, mm. met his friends, talked to his friends, had conversations and was letting it go. And then it got to a point where I was like, all right, now now either you're just not into me at all. Yeah, there's or, a point. There's a yeah. point. So at, at that point, that was the test because then he did come over and we did end up, you know, like holding hands. What, not holding I'm not like that really in in public but like he did end up coming over and giving me the attention that i that not that i wanted but like i came all this way you know and so i think he recognized that and then was by my side basically after that point but i was there for a good hour just kind of chilling really? you know, with his friends and stuff but i mean did, he introduced me but like yeah. it was like we weren't you weren't standing, there together yeah. yeah and i didn't know anyone but i was cool for but there there's definitely that point there did you off. take that as him defining what you guys are no he was just ha- honestly at that point no he was really just ha- having fun. They had been on the beach all day, and then they went straight to a bar and were, you know, kind of just like he was in his own world. So I didn't take it too too personally at all. I was flattered that he wanted me to meet his friends, right? So okay. Hmm. What else from other from dating? 
Oh God. Um, and it's hard to, well, because uh, anyone that I've beyond that dude, anyone that I was like dating, it was so like one date or two date, nothing that I would really do it. Let's about. say when you're meeting people on Tinder, do you do it in the beginning stages with, with texting people to test them to see if they're into me, not to see if they're into you, but just to see how they'll respond. Like, cause even like definitely when you talk about yeah. your bantering, you say that you throw out certain lines and if they don't throw out another line, that's also equal it's a to test. your banter. Yeah. But is it a test? Like, is it a test Absolute, for you in your mind? Absolutely. You th- you think of it as a test. Yeah. The 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 beginning part if you're on a dating app, there are so many dummies that like it's my test to weed people out. So if I okay. throw out like a funny line and you can't throw one back or play with it at all, that's my test that you are not we're not going to go out. But isn't that just a way to select people? Yeah, but and I evaluate think it's, whether or not people are good enough for you. Yeah, I think it's just like uh I guess I just don't like the word test. The for wording. some reason the word test it rubs me the wrong way. I think it's framing um again what I think is more of a spectrum. It's not black and white. Yeah. But it's definitely like um you know I think that a good relationship is based on realizing what what's important to you. Like clearly wit for you is important. Um hog size. Like there's certain things that are different. <laughs> That's why for we different would be women. great together. That's right. <laughs> and so I think you got to build that into the relationship and you got to be testing to make sure that the areas that are important to you are there. Yeah. And at the same time, as you get older, you realize I can't make a big deal out of that he's got a fucking ward on his face or that he doesn't <laughs> play sports or like whatever it is that isn't important to you that you just completely dismiss his shortcomings. Yeah. And so that's what the tests are is like, all right, I got three criteria. You know, you got to be five foot ten. You got to be Italian and whatever your things are. Right. You can't be black. <laughs> Have Italian you guys dated black guys the, before? My husband's half black. And what about you? No. Nope. I'm not attracted to black dudes. Right. I can I find them handsome. Like I'll see like black dudes and I'm like, oh, that's a good looking dude. Yeah. But I'm never like physically like, oh. But I'm also like, I'm kind of like Marnie where, Marnie says this a lot, but like I, I like what I know. Mm. And so it's a familiar thing. Yeah. Irish are very tribal. Yeah. I mean, I, my wife, I, my wife is, she's half Irish, but you know, all, I'm 96% Irish. I found out on Ancestry wow. DNA, which is like, even they like wrote a personal note like, you guys need to fuck some other people. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta spread those genes around. Yeah, it's not because it's not really a great collection of DNA. Yeah. You know, pasty skin and then you skin got a, cancer. You got a, a and, message right after that from Trump, and he was like, "No, no, no, just keep doing what you're doing." That's right. That's right. Or fucking Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, it's. Uh, I, I guess the tests are um, the same in a friendship. I yeah. don't think it's just romantic. Yeah. I think I have if if I'm with if I'm with somebody and I can't say something shocking and they roll with it, relationships over. Exactly. I test people. I I throw things out to see how they're going to react. And I think that's a very East Coast thing. I did that the other day with the guy that I'm seeing. Uh he he's got dark humor. So I know but he But he's ta- not black. <laughs> no, it's well I should have called it black humor. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's a black man with black humor <laughs> and um uh, loves Loves the nineties. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking. Was about. that a riff? That, I was trying to riff, riff, and then I just I start <laughs> deaf comedy jam, and I just oh, mad, but then right. I got in my head that people would get mad at me. Who were yeah, to this. don't <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, no. So uh, anyway, <laughs> a friend of mine. I'm sorry. I made a really funny joke about deaf comedy jam, where they should install seatbelts in the seats because like everyone like just like yeah. rusts when they laugh. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but the guy that I'm seeing anyway, uh, he likes dark humor, but I had to do like, it wasn't a test really, but I threw it out there to let him know I'm on board yeah. with your dark humor because he mentioned something about, um, some actor's father's suicide and how he found him. And he said, uh, he found, he, he was hanging. And I said, I said like warning, dark joke coming. Uh-huh. And he was like, he's like, give it to me. And I just said, I can barely stand when I see my dad just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, you love that. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, we're on the same page. Right, right. And it is not like it's a – the word test makes it sound bad, but it's really a positive thing in certain ways. Like, that yeah. was, like, me connecting. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Like, it was, like, a test to connect, not a test to, like, disprove someone. Yeah. In a way, if you look at it, like, yeah, maybe it's more how I think a lot way. of guys see it. Yeah. Because they get scared and they get worried and they feel like they're walking on eggshells and they feel like all women are out to get them. Right. In some way. If they fail – those tests. Right. And I like how you phrase it. It's yes, just a way to see like, whether or not we connect. That's, yeah. That's it's how early on and it. you're looking at movies, you know, you're on Fandango and you're like, uh, well, should we see... Um, like My Girl or... Should we see My Girl? And, the, and then he's like, well, what would Satan do? 
And, you know, that's a test. Mm-hmm. He wants to see how you're going to, you know, if, are you on board? Right. By the way, I just got to mention, I'm not, I'm not buying the whole Marilyn Manson thing. He's still around. And it's like, you know what? I get it. You're the dark fucking vampire guy and all your lyrics are dark. It's one note. It's tired. The music's not really that good. And I'm tired of people that think it's cool to hang out with Marilyn Manson. Who did we just have on our show? Who dated well, him? Um, oh, really? Oh, Amy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. No, she said, she said it on she the said show. She said it on the show. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's but funny she, also because so my co-host, Stevie Ryan, who committed suicide recently. Oh, on my that's other right. Podcast, I'm sorry, yeah. Well, now you're really hating on her because she actually hung out with Marilyn Manson a few times as well, which kind of surprised me, but also didn't. But I don't, I, I don't get his appeal, but it's weird that we both know two people that have yeah. kind of hung out with wow. Marilyn Manson. No, but they both... I, Amy said he was like a mess. But to me, I, I it's not even like the dark, like I'm like a evil spirit man that is what annoys me. What annoys me is that he's so 90s to me that if you're still yeah. into him, like you haven't moved on into the 2000s. And he hasn't. He hasn't reimagined he hasn't himself right. in any way. He's been the same, which in a way you're like, okay, I guess you are who you are. But also like, come on. Yeah. The, the sticks, the sticks up. Like, yeah. I don't know. Ozzy got away with it to me because the music was so fucking good. Yeah. But Marilyn Manson is like, it's, you know, it's like Kiss. There's a big yeah. concept and the music falls short. Yeah. Yes. Good. Very good call. Anyway, that has nothing call. to do with anything, but I no, just No, but that was good. Vent. See, we would not work because I could not add to that conversation <laughs> right. at all. I have no thoughts about Marilyn Manson. What music do you listen to? Uh, right now, I listen to a lot of like Sleeping Bunnies and uh, Elephants Have Wrinkles. Those oh, are my, yeah, those like are my tunes right now. Sean Lewis and yeah. Bram. No, I listen to, um, I like hip hop. I like musicals. You oh, do? Really? I've never known this about you. musicals. Well, it's funny, what a wide range of tastes. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Hip hop and musicals. That's, that's my thing. And kids' music. Yeah, that's what of I'm into. course. Yeah, you have to listen to that. Um, I I like I like top forty stuff. I like anything that I can dance to. I love James Taylor. I love. See, that's where I pictured you in soft rock. Yeah, I like I <laughs> like all that stuff. I yeah. like I like the Beatles. I like. So it sounds like somebody needs a Sirius XM subscription. <laughs> I did have it for three months, yeah. but I only listened to Stern. Yeah. The whole time. Right. I There was no need to listen to any other channels. I love Howard Well, there's Stern. a Beatles channel, which is fucking amazing, because it's all like, it's not just the Beatles, but it's like John Lennon and Ringo Starr and George Harrison, like their, yeah, their separate George work. Harrison. I know. Yeah. Did you watch that movie? Yes. The, oh, amazing. Because yeah. I didn't know much about George Harrison. He was right. like the unknown Beatle for me. Yeah. And then afterwards, he's become my favorite. Yeah. I think he's absolutely amazing. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and then you forget how much stuff John Lennon had. And it and it all brings me back. You guys are younger than me, but when I was growing up, John Lennon was pop music, you know, and it was on AM radio, which we were, yeah. you know, just immersed in all the time. And uh, you know, it just brings back such good memories. So crazy. Well, to same be alive with me. When he was just a you know like a regular, <laughs> just like a regular yeah. radio, not, person. not regular. He was never. He was always extraordinary, but that he was just a dude on the radio in a way. Yeah. But he was really into pop. You know, yeah, like, it's crazy. Strange days and like all these, all these really poppy kind of. I didn't know easy that. songs. Yeah. See, but this is a good example of a test also. Like if you're talking right. and you're not connecting on music and stuff, everything in a way is a test when I you're guess dating. it. I, I, don't, I don't think of it as a test. It's like whether or not I connect to you. Okay, I'm not feeling your vibe. You're not getting me. I'm not getting you. I don't think yeah. of it as I'm testing you right now or you're testing me in some way. Because well, then I feel right. like it's like there's going to have a barrier and some tension But I there. think that's – I just think that that's all subliminal stuff that's happening. You know, I think yeah, – uh, 100%. Yeah, it's it's just Yeah, you're not saying I'm testing. I mean, if somebody has a test test, that just feels like so sex in the city to me. Yeah. Have you had any girlfriends who've like, okay, I have a test today. No. I test him and see what But I also or not. don't hang out with those types of girls, so I don't know. Right, that's true. Cuz I'm sure there are some women who are like, okay, I'm going to test him tonight to see whether or not he does X, Y, and Z. But I would say that's that's not the norm for women. I would say that <laughs> We're not smart enough yeah. to do that. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. like I mean, you're not that's so much thought. Who yeah. wants to think that much about I it? I think it yeah. sounds like something a girl in her 20s does. And then when you get to your 30s, you're like... Or a girl in her 50s. Well... Yeah, who I, knows exactly what she wants. That's and she's true. And she's going to say, okay, this is the oh, test yeah. tonight, whether or not he's X, that's, Y, and that's Z. That's the I feel less like, fun yeah. version. Yeah. 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 We, like yeah. later in life, you have less time to Yeah, and, then, and the test changes. Yeah. In the 20s, it's really, really precious because you got some good titty 
and you know that you can get whatever you want. Yeah. Right. And so your tests are very high and specific. And then you get into the child, when you get into your 30s and you want to procreate, then it becomes about, is this guy going to be, a, can he yeah. support me? Is he going to leave me? Is he consistent? And then once you get in your 50s, you know, I think it's really about like, is this person, have they figured out their shit? Yes, you know, absolutely. Are, are, are they gonna? Am I gonna literally sit down and have this person talk about mommy drama with me? Yeah, that he hasn't resolved some parental shit because yeah. I'm I'm out of business yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And no, sixties and seventies. It's yeah. like, are they gonna die? Can they support themselves? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't it's like know a whole about different that. Stage. I don't know. Yeah. I get a whole bunch of like seventy-five-year-old men writing to me and really me questions that women ask them. They're like, "Okay, well, do you have a really? 401k? Yeah. Do you have your pension? That's like all because right. the, they want to know. Am I going to have to take care of you? Life and death. Is it That's on right. me if you die, or what's no, left to me after you die? What's weird when life and love become so logistical? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it has to. It has to though. It, uh, absolutely, yeah. it's survival yeah. back then. You know, and it's like. I hear, like, I have a friend whose father has an, a, part, a co-op in Manhattan, and he's had it since the kid was born in it, you know? And it has gone up in value, obviously, astronomically. Oh, sure. And now he's older, and he's starting to date this woman, and the guy is a little bit sick, and he's going to get sicker. She is going to tend to him for, yeah. could be 15 years. And this kid is already complaining that they got married— and she's going to get the place. And it's like, that's right. Mm-hmm. And she's going to clean his diaper. Mm-hmm. And she's going to fucking talk to him when he's got dementia. Yeah. And she that's her place. If you're sitting around your whole life waiting for your dad's place, you need to move on with your life. Yes, oh, yeah. exactly. Go There's, get your own goddamn that's place. That's like yes. the same guy who's still into Maryland. I mean, it is Manson. a co-op. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? It's like yeah. time to move on. He's still into Maryland Manson. Yeah. yeah. His room is still intact with the Marilyn Manson posters <laughs> yeah. up. Got a black lava light. How is that even? How is that even a thing? Why would that even be cool to anybody? I don't understand. I could go. I could because go because it's about culty. Marilyn Manson. It makes sense. Marilyn it's like Manson. okay, this is who I identify with. But he's very angry. Like there's a lot of angry people who are out there. Yeah, and he's the sp- well. I, know, I think he still is the spokesman. To me, for it. I look at everything from such a like an SNL perspective. Like if you look like you're an SNL character, mm. stop. Yeah, stop. Take a step back. Reevaluate. <laughs> you don't want to be a satire sketch. You're talking about Kid Rock right now. Him too. Yep. A lot of people. Very 90s, very stuck in one thing. Yeah. Anyone like He does like, very top- well. I think he's fine in his persona. Like, he's like a quadrillionaire, isn't he? Who? He does Kid very Rock. well. Yeah. In like real estate and stuff. I don't yeah. know. He does like yeah. a million different things. He's extremely wealthy. My, he's like, I found out my sister's into him, and she's like a fucking women's studies major in college. And, really? And, you know, very self actualized. And she likes Kid Rock. She likes, like, <laughs> she likes him to like, go buy his stuff. She'll pay money for his music. Oh, hell. Hell yeah. Really? But I think the difference is Kid Rock seems genuine. And yeah. Marilyn Manson feels like it's Halloween Absolutely. still every day. It feels like Kid Rock is who he says he is. Yeah. Marilyn Manson's got penis issues. Yeah. Really. Like Kid definitely. Rock lives in, what is it called? Not in trailer Detroit. Home. No, but in the trailer home, he has like five of them put together. It's like a he mansion does. trailer home or something. Oh. I, I heard an interview with him on Howard Stern. He's very genuine. Like yeah. he's like, I live my life the way that I, I tell people I live my life. I'm yeah. not like an annoying famous person who just like blows my cash everywhere. He's. He, I think he has like a triple decker mobile home or it's like something I know he gives a lot of money very away white trash. Yeah, yeah very white trash but like also yeah. very yeah. not white trash yeah. at the same time right I want to a- answer some questions from oh, our readers if you guys are up for it host. she just transitions <laughs> from thing to thing yeah. and I'm half no asleep pausing. and I'm still able to do this so good is this early for you no it's not early it I, just, is for I don't sleep since I've had my children yeah I have not had a proper night's sleep oh no yeah so do you ever get away from them for a night yeah, like once in a while, but then I go out and I drink or yeah. I smoke pot. Or yeah. it, just, it doesn't balance out for me. I don't get yeah. the actual sleep that I need. And my kids sleep. That's the thing. Yeah. It's me not sleeping. I don't How's know, the so. sex? Is it back? It's back. So oh, really? I'm the one who's wow. like you. I think we've talked about this before. I'm the one who waits for the initiation of sex because yeah. I want it all the time, even after I had both of my kids. But you don't initiate. I, I do initiate Oh, you a lot. do initiate. Yeah, oh, and okay, I get I rejected me. a lot. Yeah. But so, and then since the, since the second one, it's not been as great. Right. Not the sex is great, but not as often. We're right. not having sex as often. Jesus. We're, we're you, fucking exhausted. Yeah, you are in the weeds right now. I know. One and also, year. you have to adjust the sex. The sex has to become, like when we were single, 50 minutes was our magic number. That's what 15? we did. 5-0 oh, okay. minutes. We went. 
That's like the total of what's happened over the past I, yes. five months. excessive to me at any age. What? Yeah. That is nice. That is perfect yeah. sex. Yeah. Oh, That's my perfect dear sex. Lord, let's put on some TV shows. And keep in mind, I'm <laughs> a one-hit on. wonder. I, I pop, I'm done. I got to set the clock for 24 <laughs> hours. Wow. So that's so 50 minutes 50 with minutes, one, right. one act. <gasps> right. Yeah. Wow. Right. That's good. I say that's yeah. a long act. I say move on to the third act. <laughs> I, um, you know, I don't know if my wife was faking it, but she was. Uh, she had three acts. To wow. Really? One. Wow. Yeah. Nice. A lot of acts. Which is weird that she doesn't initiate when she climaxes every... I mean, she climaxes I hard, like hyperventilating, <laughs> sweating, falls off of me at the end of it, I goes know, into really? the fetal position... <laughs> Sleeps for fourteen hours. I got to give her soup when she wakes up. The fetal position is proof. She's that got she's, too many things to do. That's why she can't have yeah. sex with you. But I, I know because my husband's the same way. Every time that we finish having sex, he's like, "That was amazing." He's yeah. like, why don't we do that more often? I'm like, "I don't know. This is my test. Why don't we do it more yeah. often?" It's just I think it's getting into it's it. Good, you guys it's still want to have sex with your spouses. It. This is very positive. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. That's that's who I want to have sex with. That's mm. awesome. Mm-hmm. That it would take fade. too much energy to go out and try and have sex with. Oh, uh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> oh my God, it'd be so difficult. Although I would like one day to use Tinder. It's like, not legitimately as fun. use Tinder. I think it'd it's be fun. not as fun because I was in a relationship for eight years until about a year and a half ago, and I was so excited to get on dating yeah. apps. Like, but you loved guys. it at first. Mm, I kind of loved it out of loneliness because I was super lonely and like wanted to experience things that I hadn't experienced. Yeah, but right out of really the gate, you met like. Three amazing guys. Did you ever hook up with a guy right away after meeting on Tinder? You did. Mm. That's awesome. I'm not shaking my head for people listening. She got all her experience. My mom's out. family that listens to the show, oh. so I get like, oh, okay, yeah. No, so no sex for Kristen. No, never. Just a lot I've of hand holding and massages. That's mm-hmm. why you're so a lot of hand jobs and yeah, lots of hand jobs. <laughs> exactly. Prostate massages. <laughs> yeah. I'm the girl that went out with disease, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That would be I'm funny no if fun. that was your move is like, I, I'm not going to have sex, but I'll give you a massage. And then you slip your finger in his asshole and give him a prostate <laughs> massage. He'd probably think this is the craziest, yeah. coolest chick I've yeah, ever had. Yeah, right, 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 right. I'm yeah. going to marry this girl. Yeah. yeah. Pass. Hi, Marnie, Kristen, and wonderful guest. I am yeah. having an extremely hard time getting a recent uh, over a recent breakup. I have never had a breakup like this, so I think it is really affecting me in a negative way. I was in a relationship for the last year and a half, and it was a wonderful relationship, and I thought this girl was the one for me. The breakup came out of left field, and I can't seem to, f- uh, seem to figure out the piece of why it happened, thus making it difficult for me to move on. I had a wonderful, deep relationship with tons of woody banter, care, and love. She broke up with me in February of 2000. 2017, and I'm just having the hardest time moving on. The weird part of the breakup is being blindsided. The last date night we had, she said how she loved me and then talked about the great things she liked out of our relationship and what she liked about me. She even went on to the point of telling me that I was the perfect guy. A week Mm. after that, she called and said, we need to see other people. I was blindsided by this and couldn't help but try and figure this out with her. When I asked her about the things she said the week prior, she initially denied saying all those things and finally admitted to saying all those things to and about me. Once she admitted to it, she said that was her way of flirting and that she did not mean that I was the perfect guy, but for another woman. Mm -hmm. I called her out on those things and said words have meanings in everything she said was in context my trust was severely broken since she denied lied and made up some bs to try to cover up all of her crap see how you hear like he's getting angry about this but on her end she thought she was doing something subtle and helpful for him i know the rejection is part of life i'm used to rejection and recover quite well as i am in the sales industry for work but to have all these feelings and being lied to has torn me up and having the hardest time to get through this how do i get through this and move on help a brother out thanks d Hmm. well I mean, I'm sure. So how does he get over it? Well, first of all, I th- I'm sure you have a lot of advice about proper execution of a breakup. Yes. And, you know, it sounds like this woman is uh, went about it the wrong way because, like, I know when you fire people, you're supposed to sit them down and just say straight out of the gate, you you're know, you're done. a great employee, but we're done. And there's it's, it's not negotiable. It's not we're not going back. Then you can say some nice things about them. But it sounds like she was being kind of like pussyfooting around it. Over and in the, the end, that made it, a harder, made it a harder breakup. But uh, I love that you're the perfect guy, but for somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, like, that's like being at the Oscars and them going, and the winner is, <laughs> you know, the paper for the Golden Globe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> not <laughs> really the ceremony really right, right. Were great. Yeah. Well, he, so here, here's the thing that I, I think happened for D. He may have been missing out on some of the other signals that she was potentially giving throughout the relationship. Mm. This could have been – This I, it sounds like this was her final moment – where she was able to appreciate him and kind of subtly let him know that this wasn't going to work out. And I think because he had a different intention with this relationship, he wasn't listening to what was going on. And and again, I don't know exactly what this girl did. He may have been seeing it a totally different way. Mm. I agree with you. I don't think that you should over-compliment somebody, especially women. If you're breaking up with women and you're telling them 10 great things about them and saying, but I'm breaking up with you, they're going to hold on to those 10 things and label you as being scared Mm -hmm. or whatever else they want to label you as. Yeah, well, it's like That's you why get like with a, you. it's almost I I'm angry at her kind of for doing that. I understand why she did, but yeah. it is like getting you ordered so, something for dinner at a restaurant and you call the chef over here like, "You know what? This is delicious. Take it back." Yeah. yeah. It's like, "What? You're just it, there's no way to process that." Yeah. Right. And it's annoying on her end cuz she ha- she's not an idiot. You have I mean, maybe she is, but you have to know that that's going to screw up, but he's going to con- be con- con- very confused. She's codependent. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She doesn't want him to be mad at That's her. Really good which look is what happens a lot. fucking comfy you are in Sorry, that lazy boy. Sorry, my shoes are on. No, no, no. That put them on there. For. That's what it's for. Okay. You got to see her. She's just curled He's up. Hard on over I am yeah, super cozy. Yeah. Because, and I will tell you why I'm super cozy because where I live, my apartment, I live in this girl's place. Basically, I run a room and I can't sit in the living room at all. Why? Because either there's stuff on the chair that's like the kind of the cozy chair um, or it's basically uncomfortable for me to go into the living room because oh, like she God, made when I moved in before she was like oh the other roommate was always on the couch watching TV and it, it was like annoying to her so yeah. now I'm like uncomfortable going into a uh, comfy space so I'm always on my bed and you can't do this in your bed this little cozy yeah position. you need another apartment that's no good if you can't come I the told you room. about that one yeah. I know I know but she uh, let, puts you. up with my dog peeing in the oh, apartment so because Jesus. he's getting old and anyway mm. that's why I'm so he's gonna make more difficult I love this in new place yeah, you might just have to yeah. hang out here a lot more. You might have to put him to sleep. Mm-hmm. I, to I get a place to live. I can't. Yeah, like I can't. It's not bad enough yet yeah. where I would con- was consciously feel okay putting him to sleep. I know, minor middle age. I want to put him to sleep. Yeah, I mean, he's middle age. He's probably like sixty eight or yeah. something as yeah. a human. Right. So it's like, yeah, he's eh. falling apart. It sounds like. Yeah, he is. That's mm-hmm. also a bummer if you're dating guys. I mean, a lot of guys. Oh, are he's not a cock block. The- yeah, for sure. The one guy that I mentioned before that was out at the bar and was kind of, you know, with his friends. He told me to put the dog down, but I knew part of him like didn't want to be with me was because of my dog. Yeah. I knew it. Right. Really? Yeah. But the guy, the difference is though, that this is the sign that I know is cause like I knew that guy wasn't the right guy. Cause he told me to put my dog down like cold. Yeah. No description. The guy I'm with now is like, let's try to figure out what we can do mm-hmm. to like, cause now I have my Prozac and like, like let's care for this poor thing and see if we can make it any better for him mm-hmm. before we before you Decide did one. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. But getting back to this guy, yeah. I think that with a breakup, I think it's important before the breakup that you get really clear on pick like one or two deal breaker issues. Like, you know, I just feel like you want to get married and I'm not there or I feel like, um, you know, we just don't have enough. It's got to be something specific. That yeah. the person can walk away with and go, all right, I know I, why we broke up. I, yeah. But if you over compliment and then you break up, then it's just like it's very confusing. Yeah. People hold on to things. For I a try. Long time. I used to try to do a joke because when I was mm-hmm. um, coming out of the relationship with my ex boyfriend, I used to do a joke where it was like, you know, that breaking point wasn't really there. Mm. And so I used to try to do. I used to do a joke that was like, "Have you ever just hoped that they'd hit you?" <laughs> you're like come on it's true because it'll give you like a, a reason a reason a jumping I bet that's point. a real thing in real yeah. life I'm sure like I'm going to women's yeah. shelters I'm like what'd you do wrong like how'd, yeah, right, how'd right. you make him hit you <laughs> come on I'm but I really already yeah and that was yeah. kind of sadly serious because it was like right. you know that moment wasn't ever there but if you have that moment you can seize it and say this is why it's not mm-hmm. working but yeah. if you don't have it like you said well, you have most to breakups find don't, the moment really mm-hmm. most breakups don't always have that one reason it's just like same thing for you you sort of outlived your past relationship you guys just weren't right for each other anymore but yet you were still together because yeah. it was the comfort zone for yes. the two of you yeah, and that's very challenging for some people because it really isn't like a strong reason other than you guys have grown apart which i guess is a valid reason to break it up. is it's just a but harder I, yeah. lead into that. yeah it is the grown apart is so hard to like you know you care about that person still yeah but Even i you hate them I would say, I said to a woman, once I was in my 30s, I broke up with a girl and I go, I just, I don't see myself marrying you. And so I don't want to waste any time. Like, I just feel like we're not, you know, she was older than me and I just felt like, 
you know, she, I don't know that she could have even had babies because I was in my early 30s and I think she was like 41. Mm. And I was like, your womb is polluted and dry. <laughs> There's nothing I can do That's with it. That's what I'm looking for. Exactly. Where's the closest uh, <laughs> landfill? Got to throw you in there. So I always ha- dated older women. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, I my wife mentioned older that than before. Me. Yeah. yeah. How much older is she than you? Six months. Oh, oh that's not. Really oh, God. But, but I enjoy it because she's December. No, f- not even. She's December and I'm April, and this is the time of the year where I just tease her. Oh my God, that's what my ex older. and I were. I was six months older than him. Yeah, and he was December and I was April. Like really? really? What are you, April? What? Fifth. Okay. Yeah. What are you? Eighteenth. Mm. It's not special. Oh, my son's seventeenth. Oh yeah. Oh yes, I knew that. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that a? Isn't that what a your holiday? Wife, what's your wife's birthday? December twenty third. Oh okay. Yeah. Is it April seventeenth, like the Irish Revolution or something, or the I, Russian Revolution? I have no idea, but I, I do know because it's April eighteenth, and that was the day Paul Revere did his midnight ride. Nice. Okay, well, there you go. It's good to have a day. Mine is Martin Luther King was was killed. Oh, oh what a downer! Yeah, Jeez, I know. It's a new day. Yikes. Yeah, what about yours? December tenth. I don't know. Nothing. Nothing special on that day, yeah. except for me being born. <laughs> That's oh, a good point. That's December about it. Yeah, look it up. Right but I think okay. So for for D to get over this. How can he put this in a nice little package and rationalize everything so that he can move on instead of lingering and constantly thinking about this past relationship that he thinks was not split up I, I've kind of at become, the right time? I've kind of become this cheesy believer in what's meant to be will be. Yeah. And so I think if you kind of just can really get to a point where you don't just hear those words but really understand those words that it wasn't meant to be. And there will be something that's meant to be, and this wasn't it. And you can't take it personally. So the guy that I have referenced now several times that I'm not with, it wasn't meant to be. But in my head, I wanted it to be meant to be until I got to a point where I realized it just was definitely not the right thing for me or for him, but for me. And so I as much as you like someone or felt like it was right and you can when you step back you can maybe but did you need somebody else to to help you see that that wasn't the right one no I didn't Um, well I mean I I, what I did need was to connect with not someone say on a romantic level but have a connection with someone on a mental level where you're exposed to how wonderful it can be to really really be connected with somebody that's true but what if you never had that before then it's hard. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's one thing when you hear the words versus when you really understand the words. Yeah. Cause before I would just hear them until I experienced it. So I have, um, this workbook that's on my website. That's about ways to figure out what your values are and what are the most important things to you in relationships and outside of a relationship. So D I'm happy to give you a copy of that, but I would suggest going through something like the guidebook that I have or some way that can highlight the things that are most important to you and then for you to evaluate whether or not this girl fit into those things that were most important. Because most often, if something wasn't working and clicking for her, then then most likely those top values for you were also not met in some way. There was something off, but you guys stuck together because it seemed to work for the time. And then if you can if you can highlight those things for yourself that you are looking for, and realize that she wasn't giving it to you. Well, number one, she wasn't giving you respect, which should hopefully be one of your top values. Um, then you can rationalize the way that Kristen's talking about and say, you know what? This person wasn't the right person for me. And then you can move on and get on Tinder, get on Hinge, get out of your house, go rebuild your social circle, make other single friends, go start dating other women. That's the way for you to realize that there's other options out there for you and you can start dating again. Yeah, don't stall out. Don't stall out, man. <laughs> you know, you learn by uh, moving forward. And uh, it's amazing how your self-esteem can get so low after a breakup. Yeah. And you're just like, you're undateable. You have such a stink on you. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get that stink off, like you said, yeah, the friend's social circle is really important. Yeah, get out there. Because friends can make you feel really good. Yeah, like I love that you're a part of a hockey league. I like that you go play volleyball every Sunday. I know for some people that's difficult to do to try and find things that exist like that if their friends aren't already doing those things. But there are things available that are just as satisfying mm. that you could do with other strangers or other meetup groups or other just other ways I to get out. I would say of, just as satisfying, but I'd say a good distraction. A good distraction for sure. It's really it's and then getting out and I meeting people. I think the key people. is knowing there's other people in the world because yeah. you can get really stuck on that one person and then you're like, no one else is going to be this person mm. until you realize oh, there are like other thirty people. other people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think dating apps are great. They're great because. Yeah. You know, it it can getting on a computer is less Sorry. less fearful than walking up to a stranger 
anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. You know, and then once you've committed, then it's like the date set up. You did it on a computer. It was cold. It was easy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I wish I could do it. I would do Grinder because <laughs> I never had a gay affair and I always wanted to. I mean, you still could. No, I don't think my wife would be cool with it. <laughs> oh, she was cool with it. You have to ask. You've her always wanted yeah. to have a gay affair. Yeah. Really? I almost did once, but I chickened out. So when on your deathbed, is that going to be a big, big regret? I wish I stuck my penis on the <laughs> dude's butt. Well, if I'm in bed already, it's not too late. Right? <laughs> really? So if no, you, it wouldn't have been butt If you sex. brought that up oh. to your wife, if that was something well, that you wanted to do, what do you... What, what do you, it just been a makeup? I makeup? think I did, and she said that it wasn't cool with her. Okay. Yeah. She wouldn't allow that. Yeah. I think I would just blow a guy. Really? And maybe have him blow me. Oh just to have that experience? Just to see what it was like. Because <laughs> I've done everything. I've had threesomes and four ways and <laughs> done every type of sex and millions of one-night stands. And But I always feel like sexually I didn't do everything. Right. Wait, so you had, you had four ways with three other women? No, another dude and so another woman it. twice. But, but no interaction no with interaction the dudes. No interaction with the dudes. Yeah. Okay, no. well, that was your chance. Did you ever have a three-way? I have had a threesome. Yeah. I've never just been with a woman. I haven't had like a lesbian experience. But did you interact with the woman during the three-way? Yeah, yeah, just like her boobs and kissing. That was pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't touch any vaginas. Right. I don't, I, I don't think I would want to. Yeah. It's not my thing. But I'm, I, yeah. Was I, it complicated or was it, did it have a flow to it? No, it had a flow. It was it nice. It did? Yeah, it was like a nice situation. And it only happened once? Yeah, it only happened once. Were you comfortable with those people afterwards when you saw them around? Yeah. And it was done, this is going to sound so sad, it was done out of pity <laughs> for the guy. It was my best friend and I, we were trying to give him Who was on our podcast before, by the way. Yeah, really? to try and give him an experience. Oh, that's so nice. Because he needed it, because he, he was like the one guy, all of his I, friends. That supersedes anyone volunteering in Africa or I think whatever. so, that too. That is the nicest deed in I, the Unless world. you go to Africa and then you, you fuck a tribesman. <laughs> that's true. That is a pretty good deal. Yeah. That's like... Guy's starving and he's, he's fucking... He's <laughs> like, really? I just would like... Like a Hershey bar. Yeah, have one. <laughs> well, I had a threesome. I'll give that to you instead. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think I think it raised his confidence afterwards. See, even before I was a wing girl, I was doing this for. Were you in? Were you guys in a relationship with other no. people before? So everybody was single. So everybody it was, was clean single. And it was, it was fun. Yeah, and it wasn't talked about before, like that we were going to do this. It was just something. That we did. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I can't imagine. Well, you were talking about before. You could never do it. Oh my God. You could never do it. The the neuroses. Already, I'm picturing every possible thing that was uncomfortable or awkward or wrong. And then how did it start? How did, who? Could you do it with two guys? No, no. No, No. absolutely not. Because it'd be like two gay men. That doesn't turn me on. Yeah. Well, what if they were just all about you? No, I'd be like, you guys are really gay. (laughs) Yeah. Like, go kiss each other. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I'm just a prop. Yeah. Even if they didn't touch each other and they were just yeah. like they were just if they were willing to be you. naked to, in the same room at the same time to mm-hmm. me like in a sexual manner interesting even though mm. they might not be gay it would appear very effeminate to me like i going to I get uh, that. like a male strip club funniest experience of my life but uh just dudes like dancing like sexually and yeah. like very feminine and just like their penises are just like like swinging and around it's mm-hmm. not yeah. attractive no it's i didn't very, find it attractive either yeah and they're all shaved yeah shaved too muscly they all look like patrick swayze in that yeah. sketch with uh chris farley yeah <laughs> you know i'm like oh cut yeah. your hair i don't know I, I, th- I think me out. i've seen some videos online of some strip clubs like in canada where the women start having sex with the guys no, in the don't. club that's really? insane yeah well the one male strip Re- club that i went to was in canada because i went to college in buffalo new york uh. which is right on the border to canada and they weren't. That wasn't happening. But no, it was I feel really like most ridiculous. Women are just club. laughing when they're. There. No, sometimes Anytime it's like I've bachelorette gone. parties, and they get fucking crazy. Yeah, really? well, you know, there's some slutty women in yeah. Philadelphia. Well, yeah, I get that, that's like, true. That's in like porn or something where like women will like there'll be like a party, and not that I've seen it. I don't know why. You don't <laughs> yeah, watch, porn? watch porn? Have I watched it? Okay. Yes, of course I've watched it. I don't watch it like regularly. Mm. But do you watch it? Like, do you watch it on your own? No, I mean I have, but I don't. You have watched it, on yeah, TV. but I don't. But I don't on like a regular, mm. not like a weekly thing. Maybe like, like every, once every like two years or something like that. Yeah, right. mm. yeah. okay. Because I thought you yeah. Been, do you? Yeah, mm. actually. So I just found this out. I think I've talked about this on the podcast. All of my married female friends, not all, but I'd say a lot of them masturbate to uh, lesbian porn. Wow. Did I tell you that? You've mentioned yeah, it. It's yeah, it's really interesting that like all of us said the same thing, that like, that was what turned them on the most. And then a couple of them were like the S&M stuff, but like the lesbian porn 
was the thing that, does that they watched. Me. Yeah, I was very yeah. surprised. I thought I was the only one. I was like, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of them said the same thing. Yeah. I was very fascinated. Anyway, that's a perfect place to end our show today. <laughs> okay. Greg, thank you so much for being on our thank show. Thank you. What a pleasure. Yeah. Always Tell people great. where they can oh, listen to okay, you and your show. Right. You have a lot of things on your list. Well, Fitz Dog Radio is, uh, I have a uh, great guest lately. I just had uh, Zach Galifianakis on uh, this week. And, oh, uh, that's a Zach friend. Oh, yeah. Zach oh, friend. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Tom Arnold, um, oh, Joe I Perry. I love Tom Arnold. Joe really? Perry from Aerosmith. Really? Andy Richter. Really, um, David Arquette next week. So, um, good. so it's been it's been a good good week of guests. Cool. Okay. I want to Bill Burr to the... is coming up the week after oh, that. My hero. That's good. Yeah. So check that out. And then I got some tour dates coming up. Oh, very nice. Oh boy, Lexington, Kentucky. Here I come, February eighth through the tenth. St. Louis, sadly, on Valentine's Day. I won't mm. be with my wife. I'll be in St. Louis. Well, then you can do the BJ with, with the guy. You? Yeah, seriously. Do the what? You can do the BJ with the guy. Maybe I'll ask her. For yeah. Valentine's yeah. Day, that's what you want. Yeah, I'll do <laughs> that Tester. dick in a box thing. Yeah. Some guy in the audience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's February 14th through 17th, and then Bananas in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, February 23rd and 24th. And finally, St. Patrick's Day. You should be there. Hollywood Improv, oh, March I 17th. I should be there. Big show. I'm a big, I'm Irish. I'm 70, like 75% Irish mm. or like maybe more. Did you do Ancestry.com? No, but I just, my, I'm, my dad's 20, my dad's half Italian. And then half Irish, and then basically mm. my mom's pretty much all Irish. So You're I'm, Chicago, I'm right? Irish. Upstate New York. Oh, upstate New York. Yeah. Mm. But I should come. I should come. Yeah, come down, yeah. bring some Irish people. It's really fun. And we get some big name. I always have big name comedians come down. Okay. It's always fun. Zach That's does awesome. it a lot. Joe Rogan does it a lot. Maybe Burr. If Burr's there, I'm there. Go. Oh, yeah. if Burr's there, my dream is to meet Burr. Okay. Well, if he's there, I'll introduce you okay. to him. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thank you for doing this show Anytime. it was hard to I know. coordinate Sorry, this but I, no little... that was our fault too yeah she got we... sick all that stuff yeah. um but thank you so much for doing this uh new episodes of the ask Men podcast come out every thursday at 5 p.m pacific you guys are amazing thank you for listening and supporting us see you next week 